Hey everybody and welcome to the first video of 2019. 2019, geez, time flies. My name is Kurt the Consultant and today I'm gonna to share with you how I helped one of my clients get out of a key coding situation on a Ford Explorer. I'm also gonna share with you the key coding coverage on the MaxiSys Elite. So if you're doing your research, you're gonna like this video. If you're already my client, I think you're also gonna like this video. If you don't like this video, I think you should like this video. With that, let's jump into the presentation. So welcome back guys. And the title of this presentation is No Crank, What Do I Do After a PCM Replacement on a 2008 Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer Edition? My name is Kurt the Consultant and in this presentation you will learn the following. We're going to cover the types of transponder systems and the elite strengths and weaknesses on these systems. Then I'm going to share with you when to conduct a follow-up key coding procedure on the Ford manufacturers. Then I'm going to share with you the minimum requirements even before you think about entering the PAT system. And then lastly, how to enter the PAT system and code two keys with the MaxiSys Elite. All right, so my client was using the MaxiSys Elite on this scenario and he's in the auto repair industry. He lives in the Caribbean. Now these guys have a huge problem for certain situations in terms of key coding because since they're, there's not a lot of people who have, let's say the tools or the skill sets to uh, solve these key coding issues, he said he would possibly have to fly somebody from Florida, bring them in to execute this procedure. So it really felt good that we were able to prevent this from happening um, for him and his client. The vehicle was a 2008 Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition. And what he did was the PCM, the original PCM was faulty. He purchased a new one that was already programmed. And then when you put it on the vehicle, um, the car wouldn't start at all, you know, and then after scanning the vehicle, he reported several existing error codes on the PCM module. So um, what I wanted to do was to go into his tablet, examine the function route that the client attempted to use when he tried to code the key and then correct the, the instruct the, the client on how to do the correct procedure. So I just want to give you some fundamentals about key coding that I think would add value to you. Um, and also I'm going to share with you the key coding coverage that the MaxiSys Elite is able to do. All right. So to start, transponder keys are correlated to the car's anti-theft system. Since there's a small little chip that's embedded in the plastic head of the key that will receive a signal from an antenna that's located around the ignition cylinder. Now, the vehicle's computer must receive the proper response from this transponder key. Otherwise, the computer will not allow the vehicle to run. Now, transponders send signals in code that are either static codes or rolling codes. Static codes are easier to work with because the pin code does not change. So you can go to a dealer, give them the VIN number, they'll give you the code that you can input in the tool to add on the key. Okay. There's even third party websites that, um, if you pay them, you know, $30 or something like that, you give them the VIN number, they'll give you the static code. All right. It doesn't change. And in a lot of scenarios, our tool, the Maxis Elite can actually extract that, uh, static code. All right. So these are more, uh, easier to work with the rolling codes. However, are a, a lot less or more complicated due to the fact that the pin code changes each time. Each time you turn on the ignition of the car, there's an algorithm that changes that code. And the only way you can extract this code is with the use of a uh, special tools like, you know, uh, dedicated tools that are able to uh, decode the uh, rolling code, which our tool cannot do it. The Maxis Elite cannot de decode rolling codes. All right. And the other way is by dump file. So dump file is basically where you can actually use uh, certain hardware connected to the uh, immobilizer security, you know, chip. And then that way um, you can extract the, the information and with software, you can actually see what that pin code is, that rolling code is. Okay. So 
those are the the basics of it and it's important to know now in terms of what the maxisys elite can do on a scale of one to five one being the worst five being like you know locksmith level i'll give it about a three um, reason being is because on the american vehicles asian vehicles you'll have a lot of immobilizer options okay in terms of doing key coding but on the european side it's non-existent because most of them use that rolling code okay now with that being said a lot of people when they when they call me they say yeah kurt i've seen your other videos you can do key coding i want to do key coding and when i uh, dig deeper into what they really want some of my clients I don't know if you guys know but the the elite one of the, the main reasons why this tool is so great is that you can do programming directly from the tablet for BMW and Mercedes it's really easy okay now let's say for example you don't need that but you need a level 5 key coding machine with the same let's say diagnostic software as the elite excluding the ability to do programming from the tablet for BMW and Mercedes. If that's you, give me a call and um, I can refer to you uh, two tools that can actually do that. I haven't promoted them yet, but um, if, if key coding is basically a, a huger pain point than the programming, let me know and then I can consult you on which tool that is. Okay, so um, now you guys have an idea of what the Maxis Elite can do in terms of key coding. Now I'm going to share with you uh, more insights into our case study. So here's an overview layout of the engine that we're going to be working on. And if you look at number five, that's where the PCL module is located. For those of you who are wondering, uh, and here's a better picture of the actual engine. And if you look at the yellow uh, arrow pointing down, that's where the PCM is located. Um, you can probably get these for this vehicle for around 500 bucks from the dealer, maybe less. And in terms of what my client did, he purchased one from the dealer and then had a third party program it for him. And then uh, now I'm going to show with you what steps he did to try to program the key. And then I'm going to show with you what I did to uh, resolve his issue. So first I logged into my client's device and I asked him to show me exactly what he did. So here are some screenshots of the diagnostic session. I asked him if he had two keys on hand, which he did, and you can see it's required. And as he entered the patch system, the first mistake he made was he clicked the option to add on the key, which logically everybody would have done. But I'll explain why this is, this is the incorrect procedure. Um, the first key was coded successfully, but the second key had a DTC on it, which I thought was unusual. So just for peace of mind, I wanted to see what faults were on the PCM module because sometimes if the PCM has like error codes on it, you can't code the keys properly until everything has been cleared from the PCM. So as I investigated, I have a personal account with Identifix to get my repair information. The error code P1000 it was just an onboard diagnostic drive cycle that was not complete. And the P1260 was stating to perform the passive anti theft system parameter reset. Now, when I saw this, I knew exactly where it was. I knew exactly what the problem is. But before I conducted the procedure, I asked the client more about that, that key that had the fault on it. So long story short, he bought it from Amazon. I did several tests validated that that key was not compatible all right there was something wrong with that key so luckily he had like a, another original spare key which was used in the procedure which i'm going to show you shortly now remember when the client initially entered the pat system he clicked the icon to add on the key there was one step actually two steps that he missed that i'm going to share with you that's mandatory anytime you replace a PCM or an instrument cluster. This advice is golden because I've seen so many people who actually have our tool and they're still outsourcing because they don't know about this advice that I'm about to share with you guys. So anytime you guys replace an instrument cluster or a PCM module on a Ford, 
The instrument cluster actually needs to be trained to identify it using what Ford calls a parameter reset. To properly program the keys before it will allow the PCM to crank and start the engine. Now Ford states this, okay, this requires a scan tool with the parameter reset function, okay? Even if you, let's say, just went ahead and tried to erase the keys first, it's not going to work. The vehicle will only start with the original computer because the parameter reset lets the patch module know that there's a new PCM computer in the car it will allow the keys to be read by both the patch module and the replaced PCM module. Now that you understand this, I will show you my exact steps on how I got this vehicle started for my client. All right, guys, I took the driver's seat on this one, so I'm going to be going pretty fast. But the first thing we're going to do is click the hot functions icon, go to mobilizer and keys, and then I'll take us directly to the passive anti-theft system functions. Once we're there, it's going to give us a prompt to have our two keys on hand and we're going to press OK to continue. Turn on the ignition, press OK. Uh, this procedure would take 10 minutes. Would you like to continue? Press OK. And unfortunately, each time you get into the patch system, it always takes 10 minutes. It's not a defect on the tool. Even Ford's OEM tool does the same thing, unfortunately. So <laughs> we just have to sit here and wait and um, once this is finished, we're going to go ahead and press OK. All right, so we're done there. And security access is granted. Now, there's a loads of options here. OK, if you don't know what you're doing, you could be wasting a lot of time. But all we're going to do is click the parameter reset icon right smack in the middle. And once we do that, it's going to uh, give us a couple of prompts. We're going to click yes and watch it do its thing. Turn on the ignition and we're pretty much done with that. It's a very simple procedure. Now the module has been uh, reset and all we're going to do is locate the ignition key code erase right above it to erase all the keys and click yes. Turn on the ignition. Let it do its thing. Bada boom, bada bing. And once this is complete, um, we're going to get a notification that all keys have been erased and it's going to allow us to program the two keys. So we're going to press OK. And this is the last step. So this is the manual uh, procedure. We're going to take out the VCI from the car or the J2534 and then we're going to insert the first key, turn it to the on position and count to six. After that's done, take the key out, put the second key in and repeat the same procedure to put it on the on position count to six then you're done once you're complete with that manual procedure press ok and the scan to validate if the keys have been programmed and in our case it has been programmed click ok turn on the vehicle you have a happy customer and you now know how to do and know what to do after you insert a new PCM module or instrument cluster. You have to do the parameter reset first. So guys, that brings us to the end of this case study, which I hope will give you a technical perspective on what problems a Maxisys can solve, but more importantly, how the aid of a consultant can potentially get you out of critical situations. All right. So for $3,600, I can give you the Maxisys Elite with two year free updates. You get the BMW cable, the Benz 14 adapter, the MV108 digital video scope, and this is my standard package. Plus, I come with the tool. All right. So, you know, my 10 years experience of solving problems, that's going to be at your disposal. In addition to that, maybe you, you know, may not like some of the uh, bonuses that I'm offering. You can swap them. There's different um, accessories that you can get that I can replace, you know, um, that. It's more tailored to your workflow. Um, my newest partnership is with a company called Tightreach, and they basically have this uh, the tool where it, it's a, an extension that lets you reach those hard to reach places without busting your knuckles. Not something you would use every day, but you know, in some scenarios, it might be you know making your job a lot easier. So, anyhow, guys, let's start off the new year right by allowing me to assist you in getting one of these in your hands. Just call me at the number above 844-210-9020. I'll 
so I can learn more about your needs and share with you everything that you'll be receiving plus the additional services that I'll render to you. With that guys, thanks so much for your support. I really appreciate it and I am going to be working on my next videos for you guys. So subscribe, like the channel, and I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.